If you watch our channel often, you should know that the United States has suppressed the development of the global chip semiconductor industry more than once, and frequent changes to the rules have caused many American companies to be countered. But the United States did not stop its actions because of this, but expanded the scope of chip rules again and again. There is new news that the United States intends to introduce new regulations to impose new restrictions on memory chips and logic chips below 14 nanometers. After the news came, the stock price of the core company plummeted. What happened? The United States insists on going its own way. Where should American companies go? The chip giant eventually fell into the trap of U.S. chip rules. Forces are reciprocal, and so are the rules set by the United States. It seems to be a restriction on some specific companies, but in fact, American suppliers who are restricted from shipping are not feeling well. NVIDIA received a notice from the United States that it will not be able to ship two high-end GPU chips, the A100 and H100, at will. This has made NVIDIA's already sluggish revenue even worse. Not being able to ship is equivalent to losing potential sales, which is not beneficial to revitalizing performance. There are also American equipment suppliers, such as Calais and Fanlin, who have also received news that the chip manufacturing equipment that is prohibited from being shipped at will from 10 nanometers to 14 nanometers. These situations are obvious to all. Under the U.S. rules, the revenue of U.S. companies has been significantly affected. For example, NVIDIA's second quarter net profit plummeted 72%, and Intel's second quarter net profit fell 109% year-on-year, setting the worst record in more than 20 years. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that the life of American companies is not easy. If it is not for the rules that affect the free shipment of American companies, it is estimated that they can achieve greater sales in the consumer market. But what people did not expect is that the United States turned a blind eye to the losses of American companies and continued to carry out actions. According to news from the U.S. media, the U.S. plans to issue new restrictions that may prohibit U.S. suppliers from freely providing equipment for the production of DRAM and NAND chips. If they provide 18 nanometers DRAM chips, 14 nanometers logic chips and other products, they need to obtain a license. The United States has set its sights on the field of memory chips, not just memory chips, but nowadays all kinds of terminal equipment and high-tech industries are inseparable from the support of memory chips. So the US action against memory chips also proves the importance of such chips. Following the news, U.S. stocks plummeted on October 7. Among them, the share price of chip giant AMD plummeted 13.8%, and its market value evaporated by 15.18 billion U.S. dollars, about 108 billion yuan. Apple also fell by 3.67% and its market value evaporated by 85.819 billion US dollars, about 610.6 billion yuan. The US chip giant has been trapped by the rules, and what the United States has done has made American companies pay for it. I am afraid this is not the end, but a new beginning. The United States makes American companies reverse the road of chip globalization, and it is naturally not that easy to achieve a happy ending. Now that the United States wants to further expand the scope of restrictions, it will only make more American companies suffer from the backlash of chip rules. On the contrary, Chinese chips are breaking through against the trend, 
increasing the self-sufficiency rate of chips and the level of localization of the supply chain. According to a report released by Research Institute Gartner, the localization level of China's semiconductor manufacturing industry continues to improve. In chip manufacturing steps such as etching, ion implantation, and cleaning, some Chinese manufacturers can achieve 28 nanometers process technology, or even 14 nanometers. It is estimated that by 2027, half of China's mature process nodes will have equipment, and raw materials will come from Chinese suppliers. Shanghai also announced some of the costs achieved by domestic chips, including breakthroughs in 90 nanometers lithography machines, 14 nanometers chip mass production, and large silicon wafers. It can be seen that domestic chips are continuing to move forward in the distant future, increasing R&D efforts to break through against the trend. In the process of improving the self-sufficiency rate of domestic chips in the future, chips that can be produced independently will gradually promote localized manufacturing. The United States insists on going its own way. Where should American companies go? Chips are inseparable from globalization. Even TSMC needs to purchase EUV lithography machines from the Netherlands, Photoresist from Japan, and EDA software from the United States. Without the support of the global industrial chain, it is tantamount to a woman who cannot cook without rice. The US is taking the completely opposite path to chip globalization, using huge subsidies to try to concentrate the resources of the chip industry in the US, thinking that this will promote the rise of chip ontology. But I don't know if the United States has ever thought about how to deal with the chips produced without the support of the consumer market, even if it has mastered the supply level of the supply side and a large number of chip production capacity. NVIDIA spent a huge amount of R&D investment to design the A100 and H100 chips and spent a lot of money to find a foundry to process them. No matter how many chips are produced, if they leave the consumer market, it will be a waste of money. This kind of situation will continue to exist. The problem is that the United States insists on going its own way. Where will American companies go? It is estimated that we can only find a way to increase the sales of secondary non-restricted products or find a larger consumer market. Otherwise, under the action of the rules, US companies will only be separated from the original consumer market. And to break this barrier, it is not up to U.S. companies to decide. Summarize. From the perspective of the consumer market, if you can't buy the chips you want, the best option is to make them yourself. Use self-reliance and self-sufficiency to solve market needs. After the final breakthrough is achieved, it will be their loss if others do not sell chips. Of course, going this route takes a lot of effort. Talent, market, capital, etc. are all indispensable, and we look forward to achieving a successful ice-breaking result in the end. What do you think about this? Feel free to share in the comments below.